In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Project Canvas. Essentially, the Project Canvas is a 30,000 foot view of your interactive video project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload some videos. Now, I've actually got some videos over here on my desktop that I've pre-prepared. This is for a local business for a coffee shop where we have an intro video and they can choose what their favorite coffee is, espresso, cappuccino, Americano, or a latte. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on upload new video. Now here we can upload from our media library if we've already previously uploaded videos to our previous projects or to our media library as I showed you previously. We also have the option to add stock video if we're a pro user. Uh, and there's tons of stock footage and we can filter by, uh, you know, categories or tags and, you know, stuff like that. We have the option to add a video from a URL or simply upload from our computer. I'm going to upload from our computer. So I'm going to head over here. I'm going to drag the intro video over. Now, what happens is the video gets uploaded. Then we uh, compress the video. So it plays best through Interactor. Okay, so you can see the intro video is uploading now. After this is uploaded, you'll get a success message and it will be then moved over to the media library. So it says adding to project and it says success. Uh, media successfully added. We will now transcode the video to make it load faster. So the encoding is happening over here. Now, Unfortunately, it uploads as video one. When the 2.0 version of Interactor comes out in the next few weeks, it will automatically take the name of the file. So it's easier to use. Now, when this video is encoding, the intro video, I can upload the next video, the espresso video. So I'm gonna upload the espresso video as video one, the intro video is encoding. Okay, now I'm going to upload the next video, which is video three, Cappuccino. And then we'll do video four and video five, just so you can see the process. So there's nothing that's getting missed out over here. Okay, great. So you can see video one, the intro video is now encoded i'm just i've clicked so what i've done here is i've clicked where it says video one and i'm going to change the name to say intro video okay and you know we had video two we had video three i'm now going to upload the next few videos so video four which is americano and then we'll do video five which is latte should definitely have had a bulletproof coffee option on here so it says adding to project which is great and now we're going to upload the final video which is the latte video Okay, great. So as these are encoding, let's rename video two and video number three. So video number two was espresso, video three was cappuccino. So I'm gonna rename this one as espresso. I'm gonna rename video three as um, cappuccino. Make sure we spell this right. Now, as we're waiting for the other two videos to encode, let me show you how this works. I'm gonna drag the intro video over to the canvas, okay? Now, this S means this is the start video. This is the first video that's going to play, okay? And you can see we can start adding a video end path, okay? Now there's two types of paths that we can add. There's a video end path, which is green, 
or an element path which is blue, which we're going to get onto in the next video. Okay, let's finish renaming these. So we've got Americano and Latte to rename. So I'm going to rename video four as Americano and I'm going to rename video five as Latte. As I said, in the next update coming in a few weeks, you won't have to change the name. It will just be uh, brought over from the video file name. So let's drag these over. We have Espresso, we have Cappuccino, we have Americano, and we have Latte. Okay, now I'm just going to position these how I want them on the canvas. And of course, we can use the plus or the minus to zoom in or zoom out. Now, what I need to tell you about is the video end path or the video click path. The video end path, which is this green arrow, this means that this video will automatically play after this video has finished. Okay. Now, I'll show you a live example in a second of why you would want this. But first, let me just explain what the element click path is. So this will automatically play after this video finishes. That's what the end path is. Now the element click path, which is blue, on the other hand, goes like so. I'm going to make an element click path from the intro video to the espresso video. Now I'm going to double click on the intro video. That takes us into the uh, place where we can make our videos interactive. Okay, so we've gone from the canvas to the video editor. Now, I'm going to do a full video on this, but for right now, I'm just going to fast forward to our interaction layer over here, and we'll get the time in Most right. like to come in and try. Now, I'm going to make this espresso part of the video interactive by dragging over a hotspot. Now, don't worry about this right now because I'm going to have a full video explaining this. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this wizard and I'm just going to make this part of the video. When someone clicks over here, what I want to happen is the node to play, which is the espresso node. Okay, and I'll rename hotspot one to espresso. Okay, I'm just going to save this. And now when I go back to the canvas, you'll see the click path is blue. Okay, so this espresso video is only going to play when someone clicks this hotspot. Okay, that's the difference between the blue element click path and the green video end path. OK, so before we go on to the next video, let me actually um, go over what a video end path is and show you a live example. We know it means that this video plays straight after this video. So let me show you a live example. OK, I'm just going to click on preview project. And what's going to happen is we'll play this video and I'll click on espresso. And what you'll notice is the espresso video will play. So I'm going to click play. Welcome to our coffee shop. We want to give you a special discount coupon as a friendly bribe so we can show you just how wonderful our coffee shop is. And we want to make it personal, just for you. So tell us, what would you most like to come in and try? So here I'm going to click Espresso. You want an Espresso? Great choice. And the Espresso video Tell us where to send your plays. special discount coupon and we look forward to serving you and your friends real soon. Okay. Now, if we would have added a video end path, it would have just automatically played at the end of the video. So let me actually um, zoom out of here. I'm going to go to my projects because I'm going to show you an example of a video end path. I'm going to go into my demo test uh, video folder and where it says interactive application, I'm just going to select this. So here you can see I'll zoom out a little bit. Here you can see the canvas for this interactive video. This is a school application video. 
Now, what you'll notice is that we have the green video end path here, and we have the blue video click path, element click path. Okay, and again over here, the green video end path and the blue element click path. So what we can see on this canvas is as soon as this video finishes playing, question one automatically is going to play. Then we have a choice. We can click yes and it goes to yes, or we can click no and it goes to no. Then after the celebration happens, when someone clicks yes, it's automatically going to go straight into question two. Okay, and then it's automatically going to go into the next interaction layer. Now what this does is it allows you to have the questions where people can select their choice as a separate video. Okay, so let me play this for you so you can see this live. What I want you to notice is after the short intro, notice that the young girl where the yes and no appears automatically will play. Then I'm going to choose yes, so it's gonna play the little celebration video and then it's automatically gonna go into question two. Okay, so let's preview this and have a look. Welcome, thanks for coming to see us. Let's get straight on with the interview. To start with, do you believe every child has the right to a good education? So this video is automatically played. This is that video end path over here, question one. I'm gonna select yes. <laughs> this is the celebration video. Right, and now, it automatically we want to tell you about some decisions that need to be made. Two. We want to know what you think. Okay, so what we saw is that the intro played and it automatically played this interaction type video at the end. Then we could choose yes or no. Okay, inside of the video editor, as you can see here, there's the yes or no hotspots. And when we selected yes, it played the celebration video. So it confirmed the choice the viewer made. Then, because this is a green video end path, it automatically played question two. Okay, so I hope that has uh, been a good example and you understand that, you know, when you would want to use a video end path, to play either a confirmation or an interaction layer video straight after a previous video, what that is compared to an element click path. Essentially, those examples that I just shown you shows that when you click an element in a video, the uh, interactive layer shows as blue. When a video plays automatically after a previous video, that's green, okay? I hope that made sense and I'll see you in the next video.